many of you guys ready for the word today? All right, that's it. We got it now. So I got, I got, we got some cheer section over here. We got some over here. Come on, here. we just need, all need to kind of move towards the middle and get that guy, these guys in here uh, excited too. Okay, nothing, no offense. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Uh, so uh, we're, we're in a series. Uh, this is actually part three uh, of a, a series, and I think we're actually finishing it up. We, we kind of got into some stuff. Um, I, I had some stuff. I had some stuff on scribble down on scratch paper on, on our big, one big night of worship, and it's, it, it just infused in my heart so much I may actually cut into the series and hit on that next week because it's just it's, it's, it's kind of like it's, it's rolling around in my spirit, and i got to get it out. So this is probably the last... Uh, a, uh, installment of this series that we're simply in, we're, we're calling it a matter of uh, the heart. Uh, so I hope you've been getting something out of this. So our primary text over the last few weeks, and of course last week, uh, we kind of we kind of leapfrogged a little bit. Pastor Hillary brought a great word, I mean, Pastor, did I say Hillary? Uh, Pastor Verdone brought a great word for you. Um, he's about as old as Pastor Hillary was, so that's okay. Um, anyway, uh, Colossians chapter 3, this is our primary text for the series. It simply goes like this. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. And again, we agree that that is past tense. We have some teachers in the room. Okay, so, so you get it, right? Okay. Uh, set your hearts on things above. Present tense. <laughs> and you're going to know why I'm, I'm saying that. Okay, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Again, I, I, I brought that up about past tense, present tense, not because I feel like you need a lesson in grammar. It's because I need you to understand that you can be saved, but your heart still needs to be set. So it seems like the Apostle Paul has taken a page right out of Psalm 119, Verse 112, where David said, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes. One translation put it like this. I set my heart, I set my heart towards your statutes forever to the very end. Uh, so in other words, I want this to last. I don't want it to be something that I commit my, to set my heart on on the first day of January, only to watch it fade away by Valentine's Day. He says, I have inclined my heart. Interesting choice of words. The inference is that it wasn't always in that position. You don't incline something that's already upright. His heart must have been in decline for him to have noticed the need to incline. Amen. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if your heart never moved from the right position? Like you got born again, you set your heart on things above, and you never again had to worry about a wandering heart. Like you set it and you forget it. <laughs> right? Like that old infomercial, right? Rotisserie chicken, oven, just set it and forget it. But here, he says it's more like I set it, then I check it, then I reset it, and then I check it some more, right? Uh, why? Because he knows that our heart has a tendency to go back to its old default position. For some of you, that's a default position of fear and discouragement. For others, maybe it's a default position of bitterness, resentment, sorrow, guilt, right? But the bottom line is, it's not something that you just set at the beginning one time at, at the beginning of the year or even just once a month or even once a week. For most of us, it's I set my heart on his word or his statutes every day. Yes. Yes. Give me this day. Someone say this day. This day. Give me this day my daily bread. Yes. And for some of us, sometimes it's 
hour by hour. Watch until the default gets changed. Maybe that's why the Proverbs writer put it like this. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from your heart. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm alone on this. But the devil knows how to push my buttons. He knows how to attack the set point of my heart. And most of the time, it's through people who find it their calling in life to jump on my last nerve. <laughs> and, and watch, in that moment, if I have an unguarded heart or I have not been inclining my heart, I might be tempted to do what my mama used to do, have an old-fashioned slipper slap down. Come on, somebody, right? <laughs> but, but, if, but, but if I've been inclining my heart, yes. if I've been inclining, setting my heart on things above, yes. then when someone comes by and, oh, Pastor Doug, I really don't care for your outfit today. That's fine. It was so good to see you today anyway. Oh, Pastor Doug, I really didn't like the song selection today. That's fine. Hope to see you again next week. Well, Pastor Doug, I, I really, you know, you didn't get anything out of your sermon today. That's fine. I can't help it. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> Come on. Don't look at me so holy. I see you out there with your halos spinning around. I know I'm not the only one. Watch. But if I can learn to incline my heart, things turn out, things turn out differently. Psalm 55. Uh, Psalm, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, stop giving the devil a foothold into your heart, Okay. Psalm chapter 55, an amazing passage of scripture. Uh, we're going to have it up on the screen, but I, I really like, like you to turn to it if you can. Uh, and it starts out like this. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Wow. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. You ever feel like that? Like this guy, this is what you call, get, this is what you call getting real with God. Like, are you ignoring me? You ever feel like that? You ever feel like asking God, are you, do you even hear me when I pray? This guy's being brutally honest with God, okay? Uh, sometimes it feels like that, right? Uh, then he goes on, watch this. He says, because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring me down, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. Watch verse four. My heart is in anguish within me. And, and then he actually goes on and describes the mood of his heart and why he says his heart is in anguish. The terrors, someone say terror, terror. of death have fallen on me. Fear, someone say fear, fear, and trembling have beset me. Horror, someone say horror, horror. has overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and the storm. So this guy has issues. Wouldn't you say? Would you agree with me that this guy needs to go to our Connect Fellowship small group Bible study. huh? Because if he can get around us, whoever this writer is, if he can get around us, we would tell him, like we'd encourage him, we'd bolster him up, we'd say, hey, dude, snap out of it. Come on, man, get your, get your mind back over on the word. If, if, we, if he could just get around us, I know that this, this, whoever this writer is, because the book of Psalms was written by multiple writers, so whoever he is, we would say, you need a heart transplant, plant, plant. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. I'm sorry, just, just give me a second here for a moment. I didn't, I didn't notice this before. Um, I should have studied more. Gary, Gary, can you come here a second? I, I, did, I didn't, I should, I, should have, I should have looked at this. I'm sorry. There, there's a header in my Bible. 
that, that describes that describes this 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 t- it says for for the director of music mm. with stringed instruments a masculine of who David who David David well now that messes me up because if this is David who's writing this isn't he the same guy who God called because it says that he had a heart after God's own heart? And isn't this the same guy who had a heart so full of faith that he took on a nine-foot giant named Goliath? Wait a minute. And isn't this the same guy who wrote Psalm 27, verse 1? Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then verse 3, though a mighty army surrounds me. What? My heart will not be afraid? Now, now I'm messed up because that destroys the entire thesis of my explanation of the Psalm 55 writer Because if he's the one who wrote that and he's the one who did all those other things, that tells me that out of the same heart that he wrote that is the same heart that said it's full of terror, fear, and horror out of the same heart. Thanks for confirming. I appreciate that. Someone look at your neighbor and say, I have a feeling Pastor Doug knew who, did, who wrote Psalm 55 in the beginning. I got a feeling. Out of the same heart, out, out of the same heart, on one hand, it sounds like he had a heart full of strength. But on the other hand, it looks like his heart was haunted. Horror, terror, Fear. Now I'm looking out and I'm looking at some believers who who have been changed forever by the cross of Calvary. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I'm thankful for that, by the way. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein where sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. I'm so thankful. Aren't you thankful for the cross this morning? The cross of Calvary, who wipes us clean and changes us from the inside out. And I'm looking out and I see people whose hearts are holy, but is there still things in there that's haunted? Can I help someone today? Uh, one night I was, uh, I was uh, here at the church. And you, you, you might say, well, wh- which one is it? Was, was David's heart, was it, was it full of horror or was it, was it full of faith and strength? And I think David would say, it depends on what day you catch me on. Because maybe that's the reason why we've been emphasizing so strongly and maybe even a little obnoxiously over the last month, the importance of setting your heart on things above, not on things of the earth. Uh, I, I was here at the church here, here at this church one night, uh, there was a lot of things going on at the house and I needed to get the message done for Sunday. And so I needed a little bit of, you know, not, I needed less distraction. So I came down here uh, to the church to go into the office and study. And it was dark, it was late. And it, it, let me just, can I just say, if you've never had an opportunity to be in a, in a cold, dark church at night, you just haven't, you just haven't lived. I mean, it's just a, it's a whole, it's a whole different experience. Um, <laughs> And so, so Steve, Steve Verdone was working at our house. He was actually doing some construction stuff at our house. And, uh, and, and, he, and, he, and he had this idea that on his way home, he was going to stop by here. And he was going to sneak in here and scare me because he knew I was here at the church all by myself at night. And so uh, he, he made a fatal mistake, though. He, he told Taffy about his scheme. And, of course, his mistake was that he forgot that she is bound by the marriage code of full disclosure, no secrets. And so the moment he pulled out of the driveway, she called me on the phone and, and gave me, told me what he was about to do. And so uh, uh, I, I said, okay. Uh, and so and, um, I, I, I had something waiting for him. Because how many know with inside information like that, 
not only did I, was I not afraid, but I had something prepared for him when he got here. Come on, somebody. I know you, some of you are already a little bit ahead of me, but he, he showed up. He parked around the corner so I couldn't see him on the other end of the, of, of the building. He kind of snuck around, and I had all the lights out. And he, he walked up, and he, he didn't know maybe where, where I, he knew I, I was there because he saw my truck. And so he walked up to the glass, and he did one of these things where he, he put his hand up to the glass from the outside, and he didn't know I was waiting on the other side of the glass. And when he got his face up to that glass, I flipped that flashlight on, and it kind of shone up on my face just like this. And, and it scared the living bejeebies out of him. I'm just telling you. I mean, he, he, got, he, he turned gray in multiple locations of his head. I mean, it was, it, was, it was awesome. It was beautifully orchestrated. I was so proud of myself, right? It was awesome, right? Now, you know why I wasn't scared? Because it's only haunted if it's hidden. If you know what's coming and you've got inside information, it changes your perspective. Let me, let me help you out a little bit. Uh, I know you got born again, but maybe, maybe you're still dealing with a guilty heart. I, I, I wish I, I would have, I should I could have. Why didn't I? Why didn't somebody kick me? If I had done things right the first time way back then, I wouldn't have to be dealing with this right now. I messed up so badly. No wonder God doesn't want to bless me. Okay? Uh, or maybe you're dealing with uh, a hopeless heart. You know, uh, it's too late for me. I've been, I've been Googling my symptoms and I see what it tells me. It's too late. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, it's, I'm ho I, my situation's hopeless. Things didn't turn out. You know, it's like I, I don't know what to do. I, I'm, I'm hitting a dead end. There's nothing I can do. Or may, maybe, maybe you're here today and you're dealing with an offended heart. Uh, you don't know what they said to me. You don't know what she did to me. You don't know what he said. I have a right to be offended. I got a right to be bitter. In fact, I'm a victim, and I'm going to go down and join the victim club. Or, or, or maybe, maybe you're dealing with a sorrowful heart. Anybody dealing with a sorrowful heart? Things haven't turned out just the way I thought. I've lost my joy. I, I don't know how to get my joy back. I don't know how to get my passion back. I, I've experienced so much discouragement and so much failure. It just, it's, it's just overwhelmed me. Sorrow has overwhelmed me. Or maybe you're dealing with a threatened heart. David actually said it like this. In Psalm 55, remember? He said, the threats of the wicked trouble me. How much the threats of the wicked trouble me? Here, here, question, how, how much of the stuff that hasn't even happened yet still keeps you up at night? Wow. Wow. Joy, Joyce Meyer used to say it like this. Worry is a down payment on a problem you may never even have. So, guilty heart, hopeless heart, offended heart, sorrowful heart, a threatened heart. What does it spell? Has the enemy tried to bring the ghost of guilt into your heart or the ghost of hopelessness into your heart or the ghost of sorrow into your heart, threats into your heart to take over, to try to... Take back what, what God has already done to restore, to give you the opportunity to succeed and move forward, and all you can focus on is this thing over here? Huh? Right? So David said this. He said this uh, in verse 6. Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Anybody feel like that sometimes? Cal gone. Take me away right? Oh, that I can escape all this, right? And, and, and really, don't we often think that the moment we got born again, that God was going to just automatically zap away all that toxic stuff that used to keep us in bondage? Like we got born again, right? In the name of Jesus, amen. And bam, there goes guilt. Bam, there goes offense. Bam, there goes 
uh, hopelessness, there goes threats, there goes sorrow, bam, there it goes, right? See you later, wouldn't want to be you. There it goes, right? And, and for a while, maybe it did feel that way. You know, you remember, you got born again. Man, I feel you, it was exciting. You came down maybe to an altar like this, and, and you were walking back to your seat after that, after that, uh, that prayer of salvation, and you, you might have felt like the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. There is a promised land. Bam, the Red Sea, Right? Or you came out of the baptismal waters. Yes, this is what winning feels like. Then Monday shows up. And you look through the people and you're like, oh, it's you, guilt. I thought you were never going to bother me anymore. David said, oh, if I had wings like a dove, I would escape all this. I would fly away. Some of you are in that in that exact same uh, scenario right now. W when is this going to stop? When is this going to get better? The problem is that if it's in my heart, it goes with me where I go. So if I can't escape it, maybe like I did with Pastor Steve, I can expect it and I can expose it. I brought a word for somebody today from the Lord, someone who is ready to get honest about the heart condition that's going on on your inside and to let you know that, yes, the enemy has something that he's, that he's bringing to you, but you've got inside information. You say, oh, Pastor Doug, what is that information? Since then, I have been raised with Christ. I set my heart on things above, not on things below. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. David said it like this one time. I believe it was Psalm 119. David made this comment. He said, oh God, I have hidden your word in my heart. Why would he have to hide the word of God in his heart? Because David knew the enemy had something coming for him. And he, had, he was waiting for him to show up because now he has inside information. Hey, uh, guilt, I, I know you look menacing, uh, but really with, when I put the, the word on it and shine the word on it, you, you're, you're really nothing more than an opportunity for me to experience more grace. Uh, hey, hopelessness, I know you look terrifying, but now, in the light of God's word, you're just another opportunity for me to see God's faithfulness. Hey, offense, I know you look scary, but now, in the light of God's word, you're just another opportunity for me to forgive. Yo, uh, hey, uh, threats, I, I know that you look uh, horrible and menacing and scary, uh, but you're just another opportunity uh, for me to trust. Sorrow, come on, I know you look horrifying, but really in the light of God's word, you're just another opportunity for me to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I, I, I came today to let someone know, I know the devil may have something coming for you, but if you know it, you can expect it and expose it, and you've got something waiting for him because you have inside information. Amen. Inside information. Eight Eight verses in Psalm 55, David looked like a person who was defeated. He was being realistic about the condition of his heart. Uh, and really, those eight verses went on even further, uh, and it covers all the way through about 21 to 22 verses. But this week, I had an opportunity to see David perfectly model for us how to pivot his heart to an inclined position. And he gives us this last verse in Psalm 55. Look at verse 23. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half their days. Amen. But as for me, everybody say the last four words with me out loud. I trust in 
you. Bow your heads with me this morning. Father, I want to thank you for your word today. I ask God that you will just continue to uh, really search out the hearts of people today as they stand realistic before you uh, in obedience. Uh, God, some people are just being really honest and open this morning about the condition of their heart. See, they thought when they got born again that all that toxic stuff that they brought into their salvation experience would automatically be, be gone. But the enemy's a liar, and he tries to steal what, what's been sown in our heart. And so, so, Father God, I thank you that you have not only protected us, as the Proverbs writer said, that you've given us the opportunity to guard our heart above all things. But God, you also gave us the tools and equipped us uh, to be able to stand strong and push off what's coming at us because we have inside information. I thank you for that, God. I thank you that your word is true and powerful, quick and sharper than any two-edged sword, ready to do battle at a moment's notice so that we can continue to walk out in victory. I pray, Father, if there's someone here today who maybe some of the things we talked about, they're struggling, seriously struggling with, I pray for deliverance to consume them and overtake them. Come into their heart today. Lift them up, I pray, Father God. Give them the peace that they need. Give them the healing in their heart today. Give them, give them the freedom to be able to reach out and forgive, to be able to reach out and release that old, those old guilty ways of shame and, 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 and re replace them with the truth of your word that, that they are actually full of grace. I give you honor today, sir, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Listen, I want to make this opportunity for those of you who might not know Jesus as your personal Savior. I also want to look right in that camera and just say, if you don't know the Jesus that I know this morning, I, I, I want you to know him. Uh, it's, we're not talking about joining a church or signing up for some kind of sign-up sheet. We're just talking about surrendering your heart so that he can come into your heart and take over. Uh, I, I just want to simply invite you to say this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I'm asking that you forgive me of all my sin. I receive by faith Jesus into my heart and life as the master of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Listen, if you prayed that very simple prayer, we believe you got born again. We want to send you something. So click on the comment link. Let us know that you lifted your hands. If you're here today, maybe as a point of renewal, or you did that for the first time, I don't know. Just come talk to us and we have something for you too. We want, you, we want to get you on your victory journey. Anyway, God bless you this day. Have you, did you enjoy being in God's house today? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Father, dismiss us now with your blessing. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen.